Hi everybody, welcome to the eighth ep ninth episode of the Creator Cast. Uh, here we have Robbie Ray. Hi. Hi. How are you? Uh, you know, hot day, hot everything, so it's going pretty well. That's totally fair. Where are you, like, country-wise? Um, I live in California, so typically a lot of areas are more colder, but where I'm at, it's a lot more hotter. I don't know why Mother Nature just wants to screw me over, but... I've always known California for being quite hot. Uh, it's... It doesn't get too hot, but during, like, spring, it turns to summer, like, super quickly. So far. Um, so, how have you been? like lately uh you know i've been going through a bit of a tumble but you know sometimes tumbles lead to good expectations so we are currently getting back into that good rotation amazing why why have you been tumbling is there any particular reason um so i was recently uh fired from my job i wouldn't say fired i would say uh terminated due to there was just a lot of theft in my recent job where we would get stolen from and it would result in lost revenue and so the company decided to shut down our store in specific and cut down how many employees are going for our macy store and so i ended up being one of those ones that got cut oh that sucks it, it does, but at the same time, I'm glad I left because that company wasn't really great. It it just, they prioritize their glasses more than their, you know, their employees. So if anything, I'm glad that I'm out of there. who do you work for? I worked for Sunglass Hut, but the company's name is Luxotica. Okay. Damn. So I'm sorry to hear that. It's, it's fine. It's, it's better that I get out of that job before I end up with a knife to my throat, but that's just me. That, that worries me. Oh, like, has it been like armed theft? No, it's so because of recent events politically, um, are, we're not allowed to like do anything when someone tries to rob our store. So I'm sorry to hear that, but. It sounds like that's not exactly a bad thing, in your opinion. Um, the pay was good. The, um, the constant theft was not. I can see why. I can see why theft it wouldn't exactly be enjoyable. Yeah, it, it wasn't, it wasn't, like, massive theft. Um, where our store is, it was, we had, like, a giant wall of our high-end stock, but um, there was no locking mechanism to like keep the glasses in place or it, like glass so that the glasses wouldn't get stolen. But unfortunately, from what I heard, the previous manager before my old manager was he, I don't know, he had some sort of mental breakdown and just broke all the glass. I don't know why, oh, frankly, that's, it's whatever. You sound so over it. I, I was over because my regional before the recent regional had told us, oh, if you're if you're in the position where you feel like you're about to get stolen from, just stay in the middle of the store and they will most likely avoid you. And I kind of asked him, like, how does standing in the middle of the store prevent theft in a state that just prioritized theft? under a thousand dollars being fine gotcha like it doesn't add up it doesn't make sense but oh that's what it that's is something. yeah the whole gavin newsome law that that really kind of screwed us over but there was nothing we could do about it but that's fair so um i am sure people didn't uh come to the spider-man cosplay centric podcast to just hear about people's lives if they did 
hell yeah, I love those people. But um, thank God, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I I I am one of the people that like I love hearing about like people's lives and personalities. Like rather I'll, than just the the cosplay. Exactly. Makes sense. I mean, it's great to get to know the person that you're interviewing rather than just going in blind. But going in blind can sometimes lead to some great outcomes. Yeah. That's why I like, I just, I love having conversations with people. I love it. This is my way of having conversations with people without being weird. Fair enough. Um... But no, I'm like the kind of person that I'll watch Let's Plays for the people, not so much the games. Right. But anyway, tangent aside, you have a very like unique suit. Um, so the hooded spider suit, um, I kind of it took some time to kind of understand like what I wanted and what came from that outcome was me trying to update it more and more with some unique and different designs um the updated suit that i'll have ready for in i want to say maybe mid-april um i kind of had to redesign the logos you'll know that for my soda right now it's the homecoming logo mixed in with some more sharper chest spiders logo arms but and then the back logo you'll see is also technically the edge of time logo Hmm. but for this updated suit that i plan on wearing i plan on having brand new logos i've posted a little bit about it but not too much the logos were just kind of drawn out of inspiration from multiple different eras so for instance the back logo has more of a i want to say ditko uh vibe i guess i don't know and the chest spider it's more modernized with a bit of a different like leg layout yeah that's really cool and then and then i plan on updating so the one that i have ready for in mid-april would be i want to guess maybe my first version the second version has a lot more darker colors it has a more darker red a darker blue and has a blue back spider rather than the black or black the black back spider gotcha that's really cool are you doing yellow or white eyes um see that i kind of i kind of made weirdly intentional so for some of the suits i do for my own uh sona suit a lot of the times you'll see me wear yellow lenses like a black and a yellow lens Mm -hmm. and then wear yellow shoes and then um another time you'll see me either wear like an all white lens for like symbiote and all that ben riley i'll wear that with like red shoes or i'll wear a black rimmed lens with white mesh and the red shoes and that was kind of to mix it up from time to time you know i would feel if yellow was the best way to go i would go with yellow if red was the way to go i would go with red and for the other concept that i wanted for my sona so the blue the darker colors and all that it would have the more yellow lens and the yellow shoes that's really cool I, it, it primarily came from... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say I really love the way you worked out the design. It it kind of... The reason why the design is so weird sometimes... like Because you'll think of it as more of like a hoodie. And that's actually because a while back... I want to say back in like 2018, 2019 maybe... Um, someone who I found more so as a father figure... His name is Aaron... He bought me this nice red and blue jacket from Old Navy. And I looked at it, I was like, I could make this into like a spider design, like for cosplay and stuff. And that's kind of where it came from. That's where the original homecoming far from home design came from. And so now we're kind of going down the pipeline of this is the new and improved version, I feel. 
would probably work better. It probably wouldn't. We'll just have to see. I love that. Sorry, everybody, we're back. I we, we talked for like a whole section and I did not click record. Um, so, yeah. It happens, you know, recordings are hard to do sometimes. It's yeah, it's whatever. But, but so, okay. Go, oh, we were talking go about your spider punk suit. Yeah, so I'm going to just do a brief introduction of where I was at. Uh, version 1 was an Amazon suit. Didn't really know what I was doing with it. Half of the time, I was kind of messing up the suit. I tried fabric painting it. Sucked. 1.5 kind of sucked too because I was essentially scammed out of a, a good suit. I paid like 100 bucks for it. He just sent me a bunch of fabric that was just torn apart. The... Uh, stitching was bad, everything, it felt like it was pulled by Velcro. 2.0 was actually where I had fixed a lot of it. So, the suit was fully fabric painted within, I want to say maybe five, six months of owning it. Then, um, the lenses changed a whole lot because that was at that point where I learned how to 3D print and do face gels. And it kind of went through a phase of... This is, it went through an Andre Blend shell phase where I used the PS4 Punk shell, I used the Ultimate Spider-Man shell. I think I used his Bagley shell at one point, but it was too, like, it was too small for the sides. So I kind of had to ditch it. And that was when Zach started posting STL files. Uh, yes. So a lot of the STL files, yeah, Zach kind of changed my perspective and he, his, uh, his base size is my perfect size. So it's great. I can just load it up on uh, my slicer, get it printed and it would be done. Yeah. And then 3.0 was actually thanks to Zach. So when... I started 3.0, I had decided to, I was going to do my own pattern. I was going to do my own layout and everything. So I got the layout done. It took me about maybe five days to get the layout proper. I did all the layout and then came time for the webbing and the webbing sucked because I had no idea what I was doing. So I actually contacted Zach. I was like, Hey Zach, is there any way that you can help me out with this uh, suit? Because I need to the webbing done. It's your uh, pattern base. I just want to see it, like if there's any chance that we can get that pattern fixed. Yeah. And he actually did me a favor. He actually updated me to, instead of it being the version four, he updated it to his version five. Awesome. Which was, which was really nice of him. And then that too also went through, it had, I had primarily used the custom A lenses, but a lot of the times you'll see on my posts where for the version three, it was using, it was using custom B lenses. It was using custom C lenses. It was using some other lenses from here and there. And then uh, version four was actually my latest one. And that suit was actually done by eggs, which he did an amazing job on, he, I, I love eggs. He did all of it on his own. I just sent him the layout of how I wanted it. He even, at one point, um, he actually updated me with a new set of pants that actually like fit my body better and had different uh, seam layouts. And then that's currently where we're at for spider punk. So wait, why did you guys want to get kicked out? Uh, it was mainly because we were on the rails. I don't, or not the rails, the, uh, the, where Sparky. Jake Vaughn did his photos. Jeez. Which, I don't know why, I don't know why it was, but it was just weird, but, eh, what can you do? That's fair. Yeah, we just had Jake on here for episode six? <laughs> Maybe. I uh, we'll, we'll put that in post- Post editing. Yeah, I'll put like the little <laughs> asterisk in five if, if it is five. <sighs> I don't know. And then there's gonna be somebody in the comments that's gonna tell me the right answer. 
Um, actually, it was number six. Uh, you lazy. <laughs> it says the the commenter to the person who runs the cast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh god, that I I love communities where it's just like that. It's just like mm, actually, it's number five. I made the podcast. It doesn't <laughs> matter. No, I, I'm still getting it wrong. So like, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then we got the full Patreon version coming up soon. Coming out same day as this. Shameless plug. Oh, that. The shameless plug uh, appreciated, you know. We love Patreon. Yeah. Uh, nobody's subscribed to it, but I'm still posting. And subscri- subscribe to it now. Uh, go give give them your money. Do it. Do it's, it or I'll break your kneecaps. We'll oh take that God. out in editing. <laughs> we'll take that out in editing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I have a new quote for the title. Um... Distorted Nuts, I believe his name is on Instagram. I don't know. Okay, I'll find it. Tagged below. I, I got you, Ace. I'll, I'll get you an interview on here, I swear. <laughs> Dude, the more the merrier. I've got like two yeah. out of the group down. I got you and Brad now. Yeah, Yeah, Scott, I feel like you should get Scott on here. He's, um, he's... What I heard is that he's wanting to. He just doesn't have, like, the time for it. Because, you know, he's also, I believe he's 16. I just met him up in Mar- or up in January. I should know his age, but I don't. I believe it's 17, but I'm not entirely sure. Oh, damn. Okay. Damn. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, for me, uh... Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, back up real quick. Are people talking about my podcast? I've I've heard a lot of good like the reason why I kind of found out about you because you found out through uh, Brad and Scott during OhioCon. I found out about you through I want to say Zach on his uh, Discord server. Wait, so I was kind of sorry. Zach was talking about me. I I believe he was. I can't. I can't say for sure if he talked about you i can't say for sure but i 100 percent remember it from the discord of zach's goddamn i i feel accomplished i mean you're running a really good cosplaying channel for or cos- cosplay podcast for a lot of us and a lot of us uh kind of i personally found out through you about you through Zach, and I find what you're doing is actually really great. It not only brings other cosplayers together, but it shows that there are a lot of people out there learning to cosplay. We are those people who need to show them, hey, this is how we cosplay. If you want to mimic us, go ahead. Uh, And sometimes we're even here to help. I um I actually made snow angels when I was in OhioCon because the first night that uh I got there because I got there on Thursday night I I literally went to the parking garage where uh my hotel was and just made snow angels for like a good 20 minutes before I got cold. I love that. Yeah. No, and it's and it's funny because California cold it is not the same as like Columbus cold. It is cold out there. Come, come to Colorado. We'll go hang out in the mountains. <laughs> oh, that's even... Oh, I feel like that's going to be worse. <laughs> so, um, I realize we're like 27 or 47 minutes in. Um, so, we're like a decent bit in, but I wanted to... And I realize I only asked like four questions, but um, do you have any like interest in doing other stuff with Spidey like I know a lot of people I've talked to are like wanting to do fan films or voice acting do you have any interest in that kind of stuff I've been wanting to do voice acting I um I find it really well made when people like go out and make their own stuff and I want to be a part of that if you know if someone wants me to voice act I'll voice act if uh somebody wants me to uh do something film-wise, I'll do it. Uh, 
at some point, I don't know if I don't know if you know about it. I don't know if anyone else knows about it, but uh, Scott and Brad actually wanted to make a show called The Untitled Show. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't actually shown yet, but I do actually have a character in that uh, show. You do. I do. It's just that really it hasn't been shown off yet. Uh, honestly, Brad and Scott can take their time on presenting my character. Um, it's a little like purple sludge character and how he talks is because there's a microphone stuck in him. And so it's more of like, he's a presenter. He's more of welcome to the show. I love that. Type character. Yeah. I don't mind it. I like the character. Um, I'll probably send a photo of him later so that you can just have it like off to the side so that people Perfect. can see, but, uh, but yeah, it's a really uh, good character. I hope that once we get that little thing rolling and going, once my character is shown and once they start working on how the show is going to be made, I would love to do that actor voice for it because I wanted to do voice acting for a long ass time. That's awesome. I know for me, I'm uh, doing a fan series soon. So that's like the thing I'm going for. <laughs> Promotional emotional <laughs> i know I, I bring it up in like every interview um but yeah spider-man the fight yeah. of our lives we have not begun filming yet uh starts filming in 2024 uh, in probably july august maybe Hope, hopefully <laughs> dude i i need help i need editors because like not like video editors, but script editors. Cause I'm like, I am almost done with the first episode. I don't fully trust my judgment. Fair enough. I mean, you have a discord. I feel like maybe you could find some editors in there. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. It just depends. True. I, I just, I, um, I kind of grew up with, uh, Actually, I didn't grow up with Andrew or Andrew. I grew up with Toby, but Andrew is kind of the guy that got me back into Spider-Man, you know? Yeah. And then when the Deadpool movie first came out, I was very interested in Deadpool. I, uh, and then, you know, I just kind of stopped for a minute and then Deadpool 2 and then kind of stopped for a minute. So. And now we're coming back with Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah, I can't wait for that movie. Genuinely? Um, I'm kind of scared because, you know, there were, there's like so many rumors of like different actors being involved, you know, Taylor Swift being uh, Lady Deadpool. I heard the one kid from uh, the Adam Project being Kidpool. I can't wait for that. If that is true, I cannot wait for Kidpool. Oh my God. If he's Kidpool, like he's basically just a tiny Ryan Reynolds. Exactly, and that's why I was like, that's a perfect casting. Yeah. Oh my god, I want to see that now. I've heard of Taylor Swift as Dazzler, which I'd be fine with that, because that's basically just Taylor Swift. That That is Taylor Swift. I feel like Taylor Swift being the Lady Deadpool kind of fits the, um, kind of fits the dynamic of Deadpool. He's like, I want a famous, very hot actress to be Lady Deadpool. And we come out with Taylor Swift, and it's like, fair enough. <laughs> fair. My thing is, like, when I think of Taylor Swift, I don't exactly think of, like, the uh, constant crudeness the that Deadpool is. Uh, yeah, you think more of, like, this gentle, like, mother yeah. figure, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I mean... The only thing I'm not excited for are the Swifties that, like, are going to probably go and see Deadpool 3 and see Taylor Swift. And it's just going to be, like, a, a whole bunch of, like, audiences screaming for Taylor Swift. Yeah. That's, like, the one thing I'm not excited for because I personally, I don't like Swifties. I've seen, like, a whole bunch of people about Swifties. Yeah, I'm calling you out, Swifties. I don't like you. <laughs> You hurt my feelings sometimes. <laughs> oh my god, I just thought of the best and most Deadpool thing possible. That, like, Taylor Swift what? will be in the movie, and they'll, like, reveal her as Lady Deadpool, 
and then she'll immediately get killed off. Oh, that'd be like uh, how it is with uh, Brad Pitt and yeah. the. Uh, yeah, that would be funny as hell. Like that—that that seems like the most Deadpool thing. It it seems like it, and then I'm kind of scared of how the TVA is gonna change in Deadpool three. I yeah. don't know. We kind of left off where the they aren't trying to kill off the timelines. They're trying to like kind of make Nurture their own, own stories and let them right. But I'm also kind of scared of what direction Deadpool 3 is going if it's about killing off multiversal variants, you know? Yeah. Um. We go from, because it's weird, because you go from, for the TVA, it went from capturing these rogue variants to letting those rogue variants live their lives to then killing off those rogue variants. It's it's a weird timeline. And I thought, like, I, I've... I'm stealing this all from theory videos I've seen, but like the uh, like a, it's like a subsection of the TVA that like is a more militarized when stuff starts getting out of hand. I get that. That makes a little bit of sense. But at the so same to time, speak. I don't know. It, it's a theory, a game, game theory. theory. I'm filthy. Oh, <laughs> it's so sad. He he retired. I'm, I'm sad to see him. I'm sad to see him go, but at the same time, I I watched when the uh, first film theory for Tom came out. Tom is a good host. I have a feeling film theory, game theory, all the theory channels will be fine. Yeah. It's sad know. to see him go, but at the same time, I mean, Matt Pat has been a part of pretty much, I want to say every kid's lives. Most so far, yeah, m most people's lives. Most kids have experienced. Yeah, most kids experience game theory, and they just fall in love with the channel, or they just go on a tangent about how Ness isn't Sans. And then there's like, then there are those kids who like think that game theory is just overkill, and then everybody hates those kids. Well, yeah, because like I grew up with Matt Pat. I grew up uh, when his channel first came out. I was exposed to it, like a couple of, of his first videos, and his first videos were part of my greatest era of like YouTube. Yeah, I it's I completely agree. It's like it's, okay. it's how do you put it? Revolutionary. It 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 was because youtube was kind of just a lot of people doing gaming videos while when game theory came out it was like the greatest thing because it's like it brings together a fan base to theorize about their favorite games and it yeah. was a great it, it it to this day it's still a great channel and also i feel like a lot a lot of the thing that like help it took off and everything was matt pat himself like just his personality was appealing his i i love matt pat just for the fact of he he didn't he took consideration from every single bit of his subreddit like you'll see on a lot of his videos he'll mention people he'll mention theorists that like came up with an idea or if they solve the code he'll mention it and be like yeah this theory this theorist right here actually solved the code of what we're looking for and that's what's great he he involved his audience, he involved his family, he involved everyone. He seems like a genuinely good person, which is not something I feel like can be said about a lot of content creators. I mean, with a lot of people kind of just ending up down the rabbit hole of this is how YouTube is, you're going to have to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I'm trying to diversify the creator cast content make it not like just cosplay and everything right you want to make it a lot more you want to make it w for anything that isn't even spider-man related exactly i want to get like gamers on here i want to get everything but the one person that i'm like that it would be incredible to have on here imagine seeing an episode of the creator cast with not had on it Oh, that'd be great. That would be lovely. I, I I feel like a lot of people would just be like shaking in their boots, be like, oh my God, it's Matt Pat. 
dude. I, <sighs> yeah. I'm like, although the chances of that happening are very low. I've had one of my friends told me that people would hate me if I got MatPat on here. Right. It's like you wish you were that person that got MatPat on the show. I get yeah. you. But also, I don't care. I want to talk to MatPat. I mean, if I got a chance to talk with MatPat, I would go on for like hours because I just I enjoy him so much and it's sad to see him go. But at the same time, like with the direction of where game theory, film theory and all them are going, I feel like they're in safe hands. I agree. You know, when I first found out that uh, Matt was going to retire, I was kind of scared. I was also very skeptical, like. When you hear about uh, YouTubers selling their channels, you kind of get scared. You don't know who they're going to pick. You don't know who's going to take over. And you're you're even more scared of, are they going to ruin your favorite YouTube channel that you've been watching since probably fourth grade? Yeah. You're scared about that fact. You don't want them to go because that means the entire content changes. And with how Tom is handling uh, all the channels, I feel like Tom's going to be like the best successor to that channel. Well, it's scattered. It's scattered across four different people. Is it? Oh yeah, you're right. It is. But I still feel like with the direction that it's going, the channels will be fine. Yeah. I'm like I'm I'm happy that Matt and Stephanie get to like relax. He gets to finally just shut that book of being scared of how people are going to react. He's done with YouTube. He's he's finally retired and at a good age to retire, too. Yeah. I mean, he's I want to say he's like in his 30s, maybe in his. I don't think 40s. I want to say 30s. I would say he's in his 30s. I don't think 40. Yeah, I would say in his 30s, but. The fact that Matt is now retired at the age of 30 and he's living well is it, it's good. It shuts that book for him. It's like I can finally just sit down, I can relax and I can raise Ollie to be the kid that I want him to be or for him to be the kid that he needs to be. Yeah, I'm I'm so happy. I'm like, but yeah, it's still sad. It's bittersweet. So everybody. We're gonna uh, take a second to. Uh, sorry oh. about that. All good. Uh, fuck. Yeah, I just had a power outage. So, so much fun. I. Yeah. So I probably go, I'm gonna probably have to go and get that fixed. All good. I. Yeah, I'm probably gonna. All right. Uh, thank you very much for coming on. Great oh, time. There we go. I can't hear you at the moment, by the way. I hate that. It should be on, but yeah. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, but thank you for having me on, actually. I really appreciate it. Our pleasure. Uh, All right, I hope you, you have a good day. Sorted, you too. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. Robbie had to go, so we didn't get to ask him his favorite restaurant. Check in the description. I'll ask him later on and put it there. Uh, be sure to check out commissions. Everything will be linked below. Commissions, like I said, I'm trying to go to a con this year. It'll be my first con, and I have to pay for it somehow. Check it out. Um, be sure to check out all the channels, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this Creator Cast episode. Have a good day, everybody. Subscribe to it now. Uh, go give give them your money. Do it. Do it's, it or I'll break your kneecaps. We'll oh take that out and everything. <laughs>